on the 10th day of the first month of the Islamic calendar in the year 61 on the hot desert plains of Karbala, a small city just south of the current Iraqi capital of Baghdad. A small group of 73 noble individuals were massacred by an army of 70,000. The victims were respected followers of the religion of Islam. The perpetrators, led by Yazid, son of Muawiyah, claimed to follow that very same religion. The leader of the small group of men, women and children was the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, Hussein, son of Ali. Only 50 years had passed since the death of the last Messenger of God, and yet already the Islamic nation, the Ummah, was in turmoil. The events that led to the tragedies in Karbala, however, did not begin with the reign of Yazid as the Caliph, the leader of the Ummah. They began to unfold in the last moments of Muhammad's life. Hope, describing the journey of our beloved Hussein. Hope, you have instilled in our heart in a world where hopes disappear. Peace, you have ingrained in our soul in a time when peace becomes rare Every breath that you did take Every step that you would make Purpose and guidance it gave Mankind's heart it we awaked Many people did leave The first teachings received Hussein planned to retrieve Loss of faith he perceived Many people did leave The first teachings received Hussein planned to retrieve Loss of faith he perceived Guide you would be in place of Rasul to restore the sacred bridge. The easiest thing to do in today's world is to join the flow. Just do like everybody else is doing. Do nothing. Don't speak out. Don't adhere to your principles. If you want to, you will be struggling. You will be fighting the current. You'll probably be the odd one out. You might say, it is not that bad. I could speak out and voice my opinion about my principles. Let me remind you that to have integrity is not all about saying what's right. Integrity is actually about doing what's right. There was a man who made it easy for us. There was a man 1,400 years ago took the first step. A man who has become now a legacy, Hussein. Hussein made it clear for those coming after him that if you want to choose, you're going to have to make the right choice. For those coming after him, those facing the choice between doing what's right or bowing to what's wrong. The choice of being strong and doing what's right or join the crowd, the weak, and do nothing. Hussein taught millions of people after him that there's only one choice, life with honor. The most challenging thing is to take the first step. Hussein has taken the first step. It is now easy for us to follow. A compassionate human being is one who is considerate, kind, empathetic, and loving. An individual who is a magnet for others, irrespective of gender, creed, background, or denomination. If you and I want to look at a man who is truly the crystallization of love and compassion, then that individual was Hussein ibn Ali. Hussein was a man of humanity, an individual 
who would shed his tears when he sees the state of his enemy, a man who would serve people as well as animals when he saw that the enemy were thirsty and that he had water for his family and his companions, knowing very well that the water supply will be cut off from him, he would serve those who had come to surround him in the heat of the desert and would personally feed the horses. A man who looked at people with such kindness, with such warmth. The next time we think of compassion, we think of Hussein. When we speak of sacrifice, what we mean is giving preference to somebody else's comfort and well-being over our own comfort and well-being. To actually have a spirit of sacrifice in one, the first thing that is necessary is an element of selflessness. A selfish person cannot sacrifice. When we look around, we see examples of sacrifice, the closest one to us being our mothers. We find that mothers easily sacrifice their own comfort for the well-being of their children. There are times in life where we will be called to sacrifice. Sometimes there is the right thing to do and the easy thing to do. In many cases, if we are truthful with ourselves, we tend to choose the easier path because the right thing to do perhaps requires the kind of sacrifice that we are not ready to give. We might think to ourselves that it is not to do with us. It is somebody else's problem. Somebody else can stand up for them. But if enough of us don't stand up, then one day we ourselves will be engulfed and we will wonder why nobody comes to our aid. The example of Hussein is a very clear example of a man who had the right thing to do and the easy thing to do. Around him, everybody turned away, looked away from the tyrant, of his time, allowed things to happen. And Hussein also had this choice. Right up to the end of his life, he could have walked away. He could have signed a piece of paper and walked away. But he chose to do the right thing. And this is the lesson for us. The next time we have a choice between what is the easy thing to do and the right thing to do, what kind of choice will we make?